Are you looking for a unique way to bring fall into your home? Join me as I create a fall-inspired busted canvas blending vibrant autumn colors with texture details for a rustic yet modern look. This project is perfect for adding that seasonal charm to any space. Hey everyone, it's Lean from coloradolean.com. Welcome back to the craft room. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I had so much fun making my first exploding busted canvas that I wanted to do another one. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link for that up in the corner somewhere and definitely in the description down below. Um, I'm going to do this 8x10 canvas a little bit differently. Um, I am not going to put pattern paper on this canvas at all. I had so many fails the last time that I'm just... I'm not interested in playing that game today. Um, so instead, I'm going to go ahead and use my Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to put some tissue paper on the back side of the canvas, as well as the front side of the canvas. And then I'm going to paint the front of the canvas, as well as the back. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this tissue paper down a little bit more. Um, not by much because I am going to scrunch it up. So I'll just cut that in half. Scrunch it up a little bit. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our Mod Podge out on our palette. And I'm just using a uh, fine touch three quarter inch flat paintbrush for this this time. Um, I mistakenly forgot to wash out my foam brush and I now no longer have a foam brush. So yay for me, right? All right, so I'm going to put down a layer of Mod Podge here on the canvas. And then I'm going to lay down my tissue paper. And I'm not going to get this completely straight. I can always trim this away later. Um, I am going to kind of poke it underneath the edge though. All right, and then Peel that back a little bit and put down some more Mod Podge. And I'll just go ahead and speed right through this so you don't have to watch this part. So I'll be back with you in just a little bit. All right, so the inside is finished. I did trim a little bit of the excess off here. Um, so now I'm going to turn this over and put Mod Podge and tissue paper on the front of my canvas and on the sides as well. So again, I won't make you watch this. Um, so I will be back with you shortly. All right, so I have tissue paper on the front and inside. I have it around the edges and I've got a layer of Mod Podge on the top to protect it. So I am going to take this and put it somewhere safe so it can dry completely. And then we will move on to the next part of our project. All right, so while our canvas is drying, let's go ahead and talk about decorating the inside. Um, for my fall theme canvas, I decided to design a pumpkin SVG and a sentiment. I will put a link in the description below where you can pick up this free SVG if you'd like. Um, the fun thing about this is once you get it into your software, Cricut Design Space or Silhouette Studio, you can adjust this any way you like. 
Um, I'm working with an eight by 10 canvas. So my pumpkins are a little on the smaller side. Um, if you wanted to move up to a nine by 12 canvas or larger, then just go ahead and resize this however you like. Um, so for today, I've already cut my pieces out. And let me just say, if you don't have these scrapbook.com envelopes, you definitely need to get your hands on some. Um, they come in a lot of different sizes and they are really handy to have around. So go ahead and check the description below for a link to these. Um, it will be an affiliate link. So if you purchase a package of these with my affiliate link, it will cost you absolutely nothing but it will help my channel a great deal. So if you use my link, I really appreciate it. So the pieces I have cut today, um, I have the sentiment, and this is just part of it. Um, I have this cut out a piece of rose gold metallic paper. Um, I believe this is Tim, this is from Tim Holtz because it is a craft color on the back. Um, so we'll go ahead and set the words aside for just a few minutes. Um, the rest of my paper is recollections. Um, the first thing I'm going to do with my pieces is I'm going to add a little bit of extra color to them. And I'm going to use Tim Holtz Distress Ink in Rusty Hinge. Um, this is a, a good color for... A, a good color ink for all of these different colors. Um, it will add just a little bit of shading to each one and it won't look different or odd. Um, so let's just start adding a little bit of coloring and I will definitely speed through this part because it's kind of boring. Okay, so I have added Rusty Hinge to all of my pieces. And this is such a great color for a project like this because it looks like I've used different color ink on each of the pieces. And that is just a really nice touch. So now what I want to do is I want to add a little bit of dimension to the majority of these pieces. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my McGill flower shaping kit. And let's go ahead and use the five millimeter stylist. And I'm gonna turn these pieces over and I am going to go around the edges. And I'm gonna put in quite a bit of texture. Um, if you look at a pumpkin there, you know, not really very smooth. Some of them have a whole lot of texture. So I am kind of just letting this curl up, but I do also want to kind of keep control of it a little bit. And I'm definitely doing most of my most of my movements around the edges to get a very crinkled look to them. And then I'm also going to be doing some long strokes down the center of each piece to kind of add just a little bit more texture to my pumpkin. And I will do the same to the center pieces. And then that will be the center of our pumpkin. Now I am going to be using some foam tape so that the dimension stays. And I'm only going to be putting that in the center. 
So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Um, I am not going to do anything with the bases. Um, I will keep those flat so that I can secure them to the back of the canvas board. All right, so we have all of our texturizing finished. And now we're going to go ahead and add these pieces to our pumpkins. Um, I'm going to be using some 3D foam squares. Uh, this is the thin version. It's all I have. So let's go ahead and start adding. And like I said, I'm just going to put the foam in the center of the pieces. Um, I, and then I'm going to add um, art glitter glue around the edges to glue that down as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get this first piece on. And then I'm just going to make sure that the edges really get secured. I don't want them popping up. And then I will go ahead and place the sides on as well. All right, so our pumpkins are all put together and now let's go ahead and glue our happy fall to the shadow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put some art glitter glue on the back of this and get it glued down and I will be back with you again. And there we go, happy fall. I think this rose gold is going to be a beautiful color with our fall paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all cleaned up and then we will move on to the next step. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to the next step, which is the background. Um, again, like I used with my Exploding Bested Canvas, I am going to use a piece of designer book board from We Are Memory Keepers. This is an eight and a half by 11 piece of chipboard. Um, I have cut it down to a little bit smaller than eight inches and a little bit shorter than 10 inches. Um, when I had the, the other board cut to exactly eight by 10, I was just a little bit too big. So I have that trimmed down just a little bit. Um, I am going to use a piece of scrap of paper from this amazing Autumn Blaze Recollections paper pad. And the piece I'm going to use is this beautiful maple leaf page with all of the fall colors that I remember from my childhood growing up in Seattle. Um, so I already have that cut down to, again, a little, a little less than eight by 10. Um, I'm not going to mess with the Mod Podge for this. Um, I still haven't quite figured out how to do that and not have a mess. Um, so again, I'm going to bring in my, uh, score tape. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it here on my board. All right. And now with my bone folder, I'm going to go ahead and make sure all of this tape is adhered to the chipboard. All right. So let's. All right, I'll go ahead and pull the top off. And then I am just going to pull down a little bit of the release paper here. 
and that will help me get this lined up. And I'm just going to stand it up like that. So. Now this doesn't have to be 100% perfect um, because this is going to be in the background. Um, but we want it as straight as possible. There. That looks good to me. All right, so our canvas is completely dry. I did come in and I trimmed off the excess tissue paper from the back. Uh, so let's go ahead and add some color. On the inside, I'm going to use my Liquitex Basics acrylic paint. Um, this is Cadmium Yellow Deep Hue. Uh, I believe I used this on the inside of my last canvas. And then on the outside, I'm going to use Burnt Sienna. So we're just going to go ahead and get this brushed on here real quick. Um, I'm going to be using my three quarter inch uh, fine touch brush for one color. And then I have the three quarter Zen Royal and Langnickel brush for the other color. And I'm not going to make you sit through this. So I will be back when we're done. All right, there is our yellow paint. Um, I didn't use a whole lot of paint. It's not a very thick coat, although I did want to make sure that there were no white spots showing through. Uh, so now we're going to do the same thing on the front of the canvas and the sides. And I will be back when I'm done with that. Okay, so now I have the top and the sides completely painted and I am going to let this dry. Um, I can now see the error of my ways in not painting the canvas first. Um, so I will keep that in mind for next time. I'm probably going to have to do a second coat on this. And if I do that, I'll just go ahead and do that off camera. And then I will come back when it is all dry and ready to go. All righty. See you in a little bit. All right. So our paint is dry. And now I'm going to use uh, some of the gold acrylic paint and I'm going to uh, just dry brush across the top. If you recall from my previous busted canvas, I did use, um, what did I use? I used uh, Tim Holtz's crayons, and that worked really well. Um, I want something a little bit brighter this time. So I'm just using a fan brush and a little bit of the acrylic paint. Now this isn't going to be perfect. It probably isn't going to be pretty, but we need to remember that we're not going to see this entire piece. So. So if it comes out a little splotchy like it is here, that's okay. Because I am just going to go with the flow just to get some of this gold on here because it is a very pretty color. So it is the next day. Um, it was getting kind of late and kind of dark in here. So I just let the canvas sit overnight. Um, before I move on, I want to show you just how gorgeous this Liquitex gold paint is. I hope you can pick up that shine in the camera. 
So let's move on with the next step in our busted canvas. And that is cutting the canvas. I'm not quite as nervous about it this time, but you know, there's always a little bit of question, a little bit of concern. Um, but again, I'm going to make a cross cut and then I will cut corner points. So let's just, I don't know, choose right there. And then we will go ahead and cut this down. Now it feels like I might have to cut that again. Yeah, just a little bit. Okay. All right, so that cut through fine, and now we will make a another cut this direction. Now it does feel weird going through two layers of tissue paper and all the crinkles and stuff involved in that. All right, and my mat keeps moving. So let's do some corner cuts here. Or not quite corner cuts. It doesn't really matter because these are going to be pulled back. And eh, maybe I'll go from the corner. Nope, I'm not going to do that. So because this is a busted canvas, um, if it's not busted into complete corners, you know, that's fine. All right, let's put that aside. And it looks like we have all of our cuts. Now I am gonna have to cut some of these deeper and I will do that with a pair of scissors. Um, but for right now, I think we're good. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this away. Um, again, these finger blades are really nice. Um, I will definitely link one down below for you. Um, so let's figure out where the top is and where the bottom of our canvas is. I think I'm gonna do it just like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. I am gonna make a little mark on my canvas here. So I know where the top is. Um, because now what we're gonna do is we're going to glue our backer board to the canvas and I want this leaf to be at the top. So again, I'm going to make just a little, just a little T on there so I don't get confused. And now we're going to plug in our Gorilla Glue dual temperature hot glue gun. And I will be back with you when it is ready to go. All right, our glue gun is warmed up. I have more glue sticks at the ready. So let's just put some glue down here on our frame. Okay. And I have the top of my board here. And then we will line it up and press it down. And there we go. Oh, that is going to be so pretty. All right, so we are ready to start gluing our points down. Um, again, because this is the bottom, I do not want these points to go over the bottom of the frame. So I'm going to 
make sure they stay on the frame itself. So let's just get started. Put some hot glue on that. And then I will hold that down. Okay, so we'll leave these like that for now. And then let's just kind of set our scene in here a little bit. So we'll have those. And then we'll have our happy fall. Yeah, I think I'm going to trim that up just a little bit more. So I can pull those out just about like that. So there is our canvas so far. And now it's time to start placing our pieces in. Let's see. I think I want to actually start with my happy fall. So I'm just going to kind of hold it up and take a look. Um, I'm not going to use my glue gun for this part. Um, I think that's just a little bit more than I need. Um, and since it's paper on paper, I'm just going to go back with my art glitter glue. Uh, let me dig my tweezers out here. These will come in handy. Now, we don't need quite as much glue as we would if we were putting this on a card because we don't have to worry about it coming in and out of an envelope. But we do want to make sure we have enough that it will stay in place. So we'll kind of straight. That and if we need to, we can do an extra little trim right there and then just curl these up a little bit more. All right. Um, and I wasn't sure if I wanted to pop these up on foam. Um, yeah, I think I probably will. I'll put a little bit of foam on the back of this one. Um, then I'll definitely have to put two layers of foam on this one. Um, I have some 3M foam that is a little bit taller than the 3D foam squares I used before. And I have my glue and tape scissors back out. So again, because I'm not putting this on a card, it's not going in the mail, um, I don't have to put in as much foam tape as I probably would have. Um, so I'm just going to put in that much. And then I will peel this off. And as always, I'm going to put a little bit of art glitter glue on the back. And then that will give me a little bit of wiggle room before the foam tape sticks. Okay. And then we will, well, let's go ahead and put that big one right there.
And then I'm going to put two layers of foam tape on this side. And I'm just going to fold that over on itself like that. And then on this side, I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on here so that it will tack itself down to the large pumpkin. And then we'll set that down like that. Now, if they're a little crooked, that's fine. We'll just call them crooked pumpkins. Okay, I like that. Now, I do have some ribbon that I was thinking about using. Another pair of scissors here. So I'm just going to cut that there. And I was thinking about just having like little loops in there. Or, well, no, because those will come undone. So I was thinking about just having like some little loops of ribbon. So we'll just kind of tuck one in there to kind of look at it. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. Well, that might be kind of nice. All right, so there we have five. And I'm just going to turn them over. And then kind of scrunch them up like that. And that one, well, this one might be a little short. You know what? We're going to go for it anyway. So I'm going to try not to burn myself. I'll just tuck that around like that. Now, this is the first time I've really worked with ribbon in this way, so yeah, we'll see if this works out. So I'm going to go ahead and put quite a bit of glue on there. Oops. And then I'm going to make a complete mess of things. Yeah, try not to... Try not to drop your hot glue ribbons where they're not supposed to be because then you're going to end up with a mess. Okay, you know what? We're just going to go for it. I am making this for myself, so <laughs> at this point it is what it is, and I am done crying about things like that. Like a friend once told me, nothing handmade is perfect. And if it is perfect, it probably wasn't handmade. Um, I'm going to jump off here. I'm going to rethink a few things. And I'll get back to you in a minute. So I had to walk away for a few minutes and figure out this little ribbon issue. Um, I had been cutting my ribbon to about three inches long. And that just wasn't long enough. 
So I started cutting them to about four and a half, five inches long. And then I had a, enough room that I could fold them and tuck them into place. Um, another issue I had, I have uh, this very first ribbon that I put in. I dropped it glue side down onto my pumpkin and I can't pick it off. Um, I kind of tried to and it started pulling up the paper. So, you know, that's how it goes. So I was trying to figure out how can I cover that up? What can I do? And Heartfelt Creations, Classic Sunflower to the rescue. I have a bunch of flowers that are ready to go. So let's go ahead and start putting these in. Um, I'm going to put this pretty medium flower over my little sploogy there. And I am going to use hot glue. So we shall keep our fingers crossed that we can do this without making any more errors. And of course, we're going to have the hot glue spider webs in there again, but that's all right. So just like that, no more glue sploogy. <laughs> and then for these down here, I'm going to tuck that one in there. Now I am using quite a big glop of glue. Um, I just want to make sure that it stays in place. You can see the shadow of a string and it's driving me crazy. And then I'll just tuck that one there. Um, down in the comments, let me know why things need to be in odd numbers. Um, I'm not sure I fully understand the reasoning for that. So, you know, help me out a little bit with that. All right, so our busted canvas is finally finished. Happy fall, everyone. You know, even with the little incidents that I had and not really understanding the ribbon because I don't use ribbon very often. I think this turned out absolutely beautifully. Thank you so much for joining me for my fall inspired busted canvas. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification bell. So you know, when I put up the next video until then have a great day, you guys. Bye.